Yo, 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 yo! So, discuss na natin yung unang flow measuring device, which is orifice. So, orifice is an opening with closed perimeter in a wall or partition. So, it is used for metering or controlling flow. So, in applications, may times na dapat ma-regulate natin yung lalabas o magdi-discharge na fluid from a tank, a closed pipe, and a reservoir with multiple partitions. So, by using orifice, eh, pwede nating ma-regulate yung flow rate o yung discharge na lalabas dun sa opening. So, orifice can be classified or characterized or can be distinguished by its shape or the shape of its opening. So, merong circular, rectangular, or triangular. Also, orifice can be classified by the form of their upstream edge. So, meron dalawang klaseng edge ang isang orifice plate. So, isang upstream edge at isang downstream edge. So, yung upstream edge ay yung in contact to the fluid and also in contact with the fluid's energy head. So, ibig sabihin nito, ang upstream edge ay yung unang sasalo ng flow rate ng upcoming fluid. So, yung downstream edge naman ay yung naka-face doon sa receiving area kung saan magdi-discharge yung fluid. So, meron daw tayong tinatawag na round upstream edge, meaning, yung naka-face dun sa upcoming na flow ng discharge ng fluid, eh, round yung shape o merong curve. So, meron naman tayong tinatawag na sharp upstream edge. So, ibig sabihin, yung edge na naka-face dun sa upcoming flow or discharge ng fluid is sharp edge no hindi tulad dun sa round upstream edge na yung upstream niya is pa curve dito naman ay pointed no o sharp yung upstream edge o yung edge na naka-face dun sa discharging fluid so ngayon naman ay pumunta tayo sa derivations say meron tayong dalawang chamber of reservoir with flowing water bounded by a common partition so at the bottom part of the partition there is an opening or an orifice. Also, there is an upcoming flow of fluid from chamber 1 going to chamber 2. At since flowing na yung water, meron ng existing na velocity na pinopossess yung fluid. And let's denote that velocity as V sub 1. So, both chambers are under pressure. So, let's denote the pressure at chamber 1 as V sub 1 and the pressure at chamber number 2 as P sub 2. So between the liquid surface at chamber number 1 and at the center of the opening of the orifice, the difference in elevation is the vertical distance h. At since na denote na natin yung difference in elevation between the surface of the liquid at chamber 1 and the center of the opening of the orifice, eh, i-denote na natin as point 1 yung liquid surface sa chamber 1 at point 2 naman yung center ng opening ng orifice. So ngayon, ang i-determine natin, eh ano ba yung magiging velocity at the orifice or at point 2? So assuming that the system is idea, so that would become E sub 1 equals E sub 2. So substitute natin yung mga values. So, that's V sub 1 square over 2G plus E sub 1 over gamma plus C sub 1 equals V sub 2 square over 2G plus P sub 2 over gamma plus Z sub 2. So, ang gagawin natin ay itatranspose natin sa left-hand side ng equation ang V sub 2 since yun yung hanapin natin or yun yung kailangan natin i-determine. So, that's V sub 2 square over 2G equals V sub 1 square over 2G plus P sub 1 over gamma plus Z sub 1 minus P sub 2 over gamma minus Z sub 2. Pagsasama-samahin ko na yung mga like terms dito, gaya ng pressure head and elevation head. So, kung papansin nyo, meron ditong function na Z sub 1 minus Z sub 2. At kung titingnan nyo dun sa figure, ang Z sub 1 minus Z sub 2 is also equivalent to the difference in elevation between point 0.1 and point 
as vertical distance h. So, yung maging equation na would be v sub 2 square over 2g equals v sub 1 square over 2g plus the quantity of p sub 1 over gamma minus p sub 2 over gamma plus h. So, multiply natin both sides of the equation by 2g. So, that will become v sub 2 square equals 2g times the quantity of v sub 1 square over 2g plus the quantity of p sub 1 over gamma minus p sub 2 over gamma plus h. At exponentiate natin both sides by 1 half para tapanggalan natin yung square dun sa left hand side of the equation. So, v sub 2 is equal to the square root of 2g times the quantity of v sub 1 square plus the quantity of p sub 1 over gamma minus p sub 2 over gamma plus h. So, yung group function na the quantity of v sub 1 square over 2g plus the quantity of p sub 1 over gamma minus p sub 2 over gamma plus h is the representation of the total energy head at point 2. So, kung titingnan natin, dun sa function is nandun yung difference in pressure by point 1 and point 2. Yung potential head created by the vertical distance h and the velocity head at chamber 1. So, let's denote the total energy head at point 2 or at the orifice as uppercase h. So, to shorten the equation, v sub 2 or also equal to v sub o or the velocity at the orifice. And since the system is ideal, since ang ginamit natin is e sub 1 equals e sub 2 at wala tayong kinonsider na head loss, that is also equivalent to the theoretical velocity. So that's equal to the square root of 2gh. So the value of h depends on the amount of the available energy in the system. Wherein V sub T is the theoretical velocity at the orifice and uppercase H is the total net energy head at the orifice. At since ang value ng uppercase H ay nakadepende dun sa existing energy at the system ay gumawa tayo ng iba't ibang scenario na pwede nating ma-encounter sa mga problems. So scenario number 1, meron daw storage tank wherein filled with liquid. So, open yung tank natin. Meaning, yung surface ng liquid is exposed to atmosphere. So, in this case, wala tayong input na gauge pressure doon sa loob ng storage tank. At sa bottom part ng tank ay merong installed na orifice plate. So, ngayon, merong constant head yung tank. Ibig sabihin ng constant head, nakamaintain lang yung height ng column of liquid. So, dito sa figure ay constant lang yung vertical distance h o yung distance from the surface of the liquid hanggang dun sa center ng opening ng orifice. And with this case, ang value ng uppercase h is equivalent to lowercase h o yung head created by the column of the liquid. Since wala naman tayong input na gauge pressure at hindi naman flowing yung fluid. So, ibig sabihin, wala rin tayong i-consider dito na velocity. Ulitin ko, ang value ng uppercase h is also equivalent by lowercase h. So, kung dun sa scenario number 1, i-open yung tank. Sa scenario number 2 naman, i-close yung tank. So, ibig sabihin, meron na tayong input gauge pressure doon sa loob ng tank. At since meron ng input gauge pressure, ay maiiba na ang value ng uppercase h. So, i-consider na syempre natin dito yung pressure. So, uppercase h is equal to the pressure head or P over gamma plus lowercase h. So, third scenario is accelerated upward yung containment ng liquid. So, in this case, maapektuhan na yung potential energy head that is being created by lowercase h. So, kapag ka-upward yung motion, ay eh lalong nadadagdagan yung energy. At kapag ka-downward naman ang motion, ay eh nababawasan yung energy at parang gagaan yung liquid. So, yung magiging value for uppercase h would be 
uh, lowercase h times the quantity of 1 plus minus a or acceleration over g or the acceleration due to gravity. So, kapag ka-upward yung motion, ang magiging sign convention natin, a is positive or plus at kapag ka-downward naman yung motion, ang magiging sign convention natin that a is negative or minus. So, sa pang-apat na senaryo, e eh, close ulit yung reservoir. So, sa loob ng reservoir, ay may input na gauge pressure at merong layers of different liquids. So, denote natin na yung input na gauge pressure is P at sabihin na natin, meron dalawang involved na liquids. So, magkaiba yung specific weight at specific gravity, syempre, nung dalawang magkaibang liquids. So, i-denote natin na yung specific weight of the liquid na mas magaan o nasa ibabaw ay gamma sub 1 at yung mas mabigat na liquid na situated below the reservoir is gamma sub 2. So, yung vertical height para dun sa liquid with gamma sub 1 is H sub 1. And the vertical height between the interface of liquid 1 and liquid 2 up to the opening of the orifice is H sub 2. So ngayon, magkaiba yung energy head created by liquid 1 compared dun sa liquid 2 since magkaiba sila ng specific weight o yung value ng gamma. So in this case, hindi natin pwedeng gamitin directly yung vertical height o yung head created by liquid 1 and liquid 2. So, ang gagawin natin ay i-convert natin yung value ng energy head created by liquid 1 in terms of a reference liquid. So, I suggest na ang gagamitin na nating reference liquid para ma-unify natin yung energy head created by the two liquids involved is the discharging liquid. So, ibig sabihin, dito sa scenario number 4, ang gagamitin nating reference liquid is liquid number 2 with specific weight gamma sub 2. So, ang gagawin natin, let's convert each sub 1 in terms of the reference fluid. So, gaya dun sa concept ng conversion ng energy head from liquid A to liquid B na diniscuss natin, so, para ma-remember nyo, ay visit nyo yung video ko about pressure head. So, upon conversion, P sub 1 is equal to the pressure of the reference liquid. So, P sub 1 should be in terms of the reference fluid. So, that would become gamma sub 1 times H sub 1 is equal to gamma of the reference liquid times H of the reference liquid. So, yung H of the reference liquid will be the new height or head for H sub 1. So, palta natin yung H sub RF into H sub N or the new height or head for H sub 1. So, the converted head or H sub N is equal to gamma sub 1 times H sub 1 over the gamma of the reference fluid. At since ang reference liquid natin is liquid 2, ay eh magiging new head of H sub 1 in terms of the reference fluid is H sub N is equal to gamma sub 1 times H sub 1 over gamma sub 2. So yung magiging value na ng uppercase H at scenario number 4 would be, so simulan natin dun sa pinaka mataas na part ng tank. So that's P over gamma o yung pressure head by the input gauge pressure plus, so para dun sa liquid 1, so that's gamma sub 1 times H sub 1 over gamma sub 2. So kung papansin nyo, ay eh converted na yung head created by liquid 1 in terms of the reference liquid which is liquid 2. So ulitin ko, ang naging value is gamma sub 1 times H sub 1 over gamma sub 2 plus H sub 2. So hindi na natin binago o kinonvert pa yung H sub 2. No? Since ito nga yung reference fluid ay hindi na natin siya kailang convert at as is na yung value ng energy head of liquid 2. 
So, take note lang na yung gamma na gagamitin natin for the input gauge pressure is the gamma of the reference liquid. So, ibig sabihin, yung pressure head for the input gauge pressure is P over gamma sub 2. So, kung papansin nyo na yung discharge area ng orifice is is exposed lang sa atmosphere. So, ibig sabihin, yung pressure at that point or yung pressure sa jet is zero. No? So, wala tayong consider dito na pressure unlike dun sa una nating ginawang derivation. No? Kasi, magkaiba namang scenario yun. No? Dun sa derivation kasi na ginawa natin ay merong dalawang chamber na involved. So, chamber 1 and chamber 2 and yung discharge point dun sa chamber 2 ay pressurized din. So, in that sense, may consider talaga tayo na pressure dun. Unlike dito sa four scenarios na pinakita natin, ay exposed sa atmosphere lang yung discharge point o yung jet. So, what if ganun pa rin yung scenario? Say, merong closed tank at merong partition sa loob nito. So, merong pa rin chamber 1 and chamber 2 and both chambers are pressurized. So, yung chamber 1, yung magsusupply ng liquid sa chamber 2 since mas mataas yung head possessed by chamber 1. So, ang magdi-discharge ng liquid from chamber 1 to chamber 2 ay orifice. So, yung magiging value ng uppercase H would be H sub U minus H sub B wherein H sub U is the head at upstream reservoir and H sub B is the head at downstream reservoir. So, sa case ng scenario number 5, ang upstream reservoir will be chamber 1. Since ito yung nagpo-possess ng mas mataas na energy head at siya yung nagde-deliver ng liquid at chamber number 2. So, sa ganitong kaso, i-evaluate nyo muna kung alin yung upstream reservoir at alin yung downstream reservoir. So, para naman sa H sub U, H sub U yung magre-represent ng total energy head na possess ng upstream reservoir. So, titingnan nyo yun kung may may involve ba na pressure, velocity head, at potential energy head. So, H sub D naman yung magre-represent sa total energy head at downstream reservoir. So, ganun pa rin. Evaluate nyo pa rin kung may may involve na pressure, velocity head, o potential energy head at the downstream reservoir. So, just to summarize, ang value daw ng V sub T o yung theoretical velocity at the orifice is V sub T is equal to the square root of 2GH. So, take note ha, na yung H is uppercase H. So, nakadepende pa rin yung value nito dun sa available na energy ng upcoming na discharging liquid sa orifice. So, if V sub A or actual velocity is equal to C sub V or the coefficient of velocity times V sub T or theoretical velocity. So, yung value ng V sub A is equal to C sub V or the coefficient of velocity times square root of 2GH. So, ito na yung magiging formula natin for actual velocity. And if Q sub T or the actual discharge is equal to the area of the opening or uppercase A times V sub T or theoretical velocity, then Q sub T is equal to the area of the opening of the orifice or E sub O times V sub T. So, the value of Q sub T is equal to A sub O times the square root of 2GH. At since ang value ng Q sub A or actual discharge is equal to C or coefficient of discharge times Q sub T or theoretical discharge, then Q sub A is also equal to C times A sub O times the square root of 2GH. So, sinubstitute lang natin yung value ng Q sub T which is A sub O times the square root of 2GH. So, ito na yung magiging formula natin for actual discharge at the orifice. And that would be all. Thank you so much.